Hello, today you're watching the Tropics Topics of September the 9th, 2018. We're still monitoring all the Atlantic activity, including Hurricane Florence, which has become a hurricane now. Winds of 75 miles an hour, pressure of 984 millibars or lower. This is probably a bit stronger than this now. Uh, Tropics Storm Isaac, previously tropical depression 9. Winds of 65 miles an hour, pressure of 999 millibars. And Tropical Storm or Hurricane Helene, with winds of 65 miles an hour and pressure of 997 millibars. I'll get to why I think it's a hurricane in a minute. And then uh, disturbance in the Western Caribbean with a 20% chance of development in the next five days. So here's a wide shot of the entire Atlantic, everything going on. Uh, Florence, Isaac, Helene, and the Caribbean disturbance. We'll start with Helene because it's the furthest east. Uh, here it is right now. We can see that it has a primitive eye feature here, but this is more due to dry air entrainment rather than a fully closed eye wall. And you can see here that convection on the southern side is very intense, thankfully not to the north and over the Cabo Verde Islands. But recently this has strengthened enough for the ATCF to upgrade this thing to a hurricane. As we can see here, it shows 65 knot winds, which equates to 75 miles per hour, making Helene a hurricane based on this. And the National Hurricane Center will likely adjust their um, intensity accordingly. As you can see here, it's moving towards generally the west, and is likely to continue to do that and eventually curve on off to the north, as you can see here in the National Hurricane Center forecast, um, curving to the north and curving to the north around the middle of the week, and eventually weakening. But for now, it's still near the Cabo Verde Islands. Tropical storm warnings and hurricane watches are still up for those islands, as there is still the threat for heavy rain and gusty winds, uh, especially in the southern portion of the country. Uh, but this will begin to degrade as the storm continues to move off towards the west and become less and less of a threat to those islands. Uh, so that's Helene, and then after that it will recurve on up to the Atlantic, and we'll just have to wait and see what happens from there. Uh, so here's uh, Tropical Storm Isaac, uh, currently, according to ATCF, a 60-knot tropical storm, almost a hurricane, but not quite. You can see here it's a pretty compact little system. It's rather small, and it's also, because it's rather small, it's uh, vulnerable to intensi intensity fluctuations, uh, that are more aggressive than your normal tropical cyclone. So in this case, it's almost a hurricane. We can see here that it's, ha it's having very strong convective bursts in the western quadrants, and it's even forming a little primitive eye feature right in there. You can see a little curl right in there. And that's more of a mid-level eye feature than a surface one. So as Isaac continues off towards the west, we'll have to watch this one for eventual potential impacts to the Caribbean. As we can see here in the European forecast, let me just back this up to the beginning. As we can, you can see here, here is... Um, Here's Isaac right here, and here's Helene south of the Cabo Verde Islands, and here's Florence. We'll get to her in a minute, obviously. And as you see here in the model, both both of these storms move off towards the west. Isaac remains weaker than Helene. This is probably a Category 2 hurricane on the run. And then Isaac remains a strong tropical storm, though, according to the current satellite observations, it's probably stronger than what the model is predicting at this time, and it's predicted to forecast around this time as well, or to peak at this time as well. Excuse me. And we can see here moving through the Lesser Antilles between Dominica and Guadeloupe by Thursday morning as probably a strong tropical storm in the model. And then moving on into the Caribbean and eventually kind of fading away as it becomes a susceptible, susceptible to much stronger wind shear coming in from the eastern Pacific with all the convective activity over there. And that will probably cause it to weaken and eventually degenerate to a tropical wave somewhere in the Caribbean. Uh, and then its remnants may continue to move west and just out of Central America, the Yucatan Peninsula, but that's more of a long-range threat. And you can see here, Florence curving well off to the north because of this trough coming in behind it, and then these, this bridge building in over the Azores and over towards the Canaries. That's going to force it on out to sea. And then Isaac will just continue west with the trade flow. So, and then the current forecast for Isaac shows, you can see, becoming a hurricane by uh, tonight, and then progressing pretty much due west for the next pretty much the entire forecast. Coming in category two in here, I believe the forecast says right now, and then moving into, in this in this uh, National Hurricane Center cone, this one makes it have a landfall in Martinique. And you can see here weakening once it gets south of Puerto Rico into the Eastern Caribbean where shear begins to increase. Uh, and then we'll also just touch on this Caribbean disturbance really quickly. And we can see here that it's just basically a big massive convection. We can see it's being sheared. We kind of see over here this upper trough over here over the southern gulf that's shearing it out of the that's causing some southwesterly shear over the storm that is forcing all this convection to basically be blown off towards the northeast towards cuba and over here you're just kind of left with just an amplified wave axis with just a bunch of spread of convection and in the model here's the european model we can see here this is where it would be on saturday it's kind of a broad area of low pressure moving into the moving into southern texas 
uh, on this time on the run. And probably wouldn't be a tropical depression by this point. It would just be basically one big sprawling uh, disturbance that would just bring bring just be bringing a lot of rain to the area. We can also see Isaac right here in the Caribbean, uh, like I said, dissipating, and then potentially its remnants moving into the Catan Peninsula. But that's still kind of a long way out, and we'll just have to see. And then, of course, Florence up here over the Mid-Atlantic. Which, speaking of Florence, this is the storm right now. As we can see here, it has continued to intensify since yesterday. It is now a full-fledged hurricane with winds of about 70 knots, so 80 miles per hour, as we can see here again in the HCF file, 70 knots right here, which is about 80 miles per hour. And Recon went in the storm earlier today and found pressures in the 995, 994, that general area, but then they went through another pass and found 978 millibar pressures. That's not shown in the graphic. I'm not sure why, but it's, that's what they found in the storm. We can see here that still doesn't have a very good eye feature visible on satellite so visible on the satellite quite yet. Uh, it's been popping in and out, but you can see here that the outflow is well established. The storm uh, core is very uh, com not necessarily compact, but it's very rigorous and very uh, robust, and is going to continue to move slowly off to the west and then eventually accelerate on off to the west as this thing eventually is likely now to impact the east coast of the United States, particularly the Carolinas and We'll just, and we'll be talking about that more as we go on through the update. So here's the GFS forecast uh, right now. This is out to 120 hours. This is the model runs. So this is basically what you guys need to, what you guys would pretty much be interested to see here. And you can see that on this run, it has the storm basically focused right off the coast of North Carolina, off the Outer Banks. And this is because it's going to be stuck between two ridges. So if we go back to this view right here, if we go to this view right here, sorry, we can see here that... The storm right here is going to be progressing off towards the west northwest, kind of like this. Maybe not. Maybe a bit more south than this. Maybe something more like that. Uh, not towards North, not towards South Carolina. That more like that. So the storm is going to be moving in, kind of like this. And we have currently a ridge that's beginning to kind of establish itself over here, over the Carolinas. That's going to move out into this portion of the basin and become a lot larger and a lot more intense over here and basically become the main steering feature for Florence as it moves off towards the west. And this is going to be a pretty big uh, factor for the storm because as this thing gets over into this portion of the basin right here, this it will start to kind of curve it in a bit more because the ridge is not going to be a perfect circle. It's going to be kind of more kind of like a peanut a little bit. And as a result, the orientation of the ridge is going to be important in determining where the storm is. If it's right here in the run, then it would just be forced right into the North Carolina, into the Outer Banks. But if we go to, so, and you can see in the GFS forecast here, it's a lot more kind of vertical, it's a lot more vertical in nature. So it's kind of more like this. So the storm would be in this area and it's just going to get forced up here. And actually, in this run, it actually stalls it offshore because you can see here, and the run doesn't go anywhere for a little while. And that is because the ridge that's going to be building out over here is going to kind of shift off towards the south and weaken a little bit. So the storm, will be, the storm is here in the run over the Outer Banks and the storm, excuse me, the ridge is down here near the Bahamas. So this is kind of over, this is over here and you would think that the storm would just continue to move inland. Well, it wouldn't because there's another ridge that's going to be building in as, the, as this jet uh, shifts north. There's going to be another ridge that's going to build in here over the Great Lakes and into Ontario that's going to be causing a southerly flow in the system. So if you have two opposing flows right here, uh, hampering on the system, it doesn't have anywhere to go. So it's just going to meander a little bit in this area. Uh, not that exact track, but it looks something similar to that. Basically just kind of a squiggly line in this area. Um, and it's kind of hard to tell exactly where it will go. Because if we, again, if we look at the European run, you see here that this, that this run has a lot farther south and moves it into the Wilmington area as a category three or two hurricane on Thursday. And then once it gets inland, it doesn't move very much. You can see here this little isotherm right here, isotherm, excuse me, isobar right here over Virginia. This is what Florence would be, and you can see it is not really moving because you got this ridge up here trapping it, and this trough down here too far away to actually influence it. So as a result, it so as a result, the European run actually stalls it inland, and as a result, it can drop a lot of rainfall. As we can see here in the solutions here. This is for the GFS. Now I know this number looks alarmist, and it is, but this is also out over water. So, uh, if this stays over water, obviously this would be good. But but if this bullseye over here actually does translate over 
to the over land. And I'm not saying it's going to be 75 inches of rain. I'm saying, but I am saying there's going to be probably a lot of rainfall in this area if the solution pans out. So if a saying that is over here, that it may look a bit something more like the European solution, which has a bullseye of about 30 inches over Virginia. And this is possible if it does get trapped in between these two ridges and kind of meanders in this general area of the country. This can happen. This is what happened last year with Harvey. Now, I'm not saying this will be as significant as Harvey, but this is a similar synoptic setup. And this synoptic setup is very bad if you don't want to be caught in the middle of flooding because you could have a lot of flooding if you are stuck in this scenario. But again, these two solutions aren't the only two set on the table. We have a lot. You can see here in this uh, model track uh, guidance here, we can see a lot of tracks doing a lot of different things. We have some moving into South Carolina still, but the bulk of them are in North Carolina between Wilmington and Moorhead City. Uh, this one doesn't include the GFS and CMC, which are along the Outer Banks or just offshore. And even one model can have a bunch of different solutions. This is the European model. This is the ensemble means. There are 51 members within this. As you can see, all of them, except one, move it inland into somewhere between Jacksonville, Daytona Beach area, all the way to the Outer Banks. Now, I don't think it'll be this far south in the North Florida and Georgia. I think the landfall area is like much, like much more likely to be in North Carolina or in the northern part of South Carolina. But this is still something we need to keep in mind is that one model run doesn't dictate, dictate everything. There are multiple different solutions to one storm, and we still don't know exactly where it's going to make landfall, but we can tell you is that you do have time to prepare, because if we look at the National Hurricane Center forecast averaging out all these runs, we can see that this forecast brings it right into the Wilmington area, like I was showing with the European model and a bunch of others, and that would occur probably Thursday evening, Thursday night, as potentially a Category 3 or 4 hurricane, which would be a very, one of the highest um, one of the strongest storms ever recorded to hit North Carolina if this scenario were to pan out. Now, you do have time. Uh, you can go to the gas station right now and get, you know, 10 gallons of gas. That will fill up a small car if you're trying to evacuate. It will fill up half a tank of, you know, a truck or an SUV. And that's if you're trying to evacuate. And if you are going to evacuate, maybe try move inland because, one, you wouldn't be in the exact landfall area so you wouldn't be subjected to the storm surge which we still aren't too sure about how strong it will be or how high it will be at this time we're not too sure about that just yet but if you are a coastal resident moving inland might be the best option now there's still a caveat to this and that is whether or not the bulk of the rainfall will be occurring over land or close to the shore and in that case maybe say you're in Wilmington you might want to evacuate west maybe into western South Carolina maybe into Georgia that'll be fine because you probably won't be in the bullseye of rainfall most likely in that scenario. And again, you still have time to prepare. Make sure you have all your hurricane preparations ready just in case. And even if you aren't stuck within a tropical storm force winds, which you can see right here, the chances of that happening, you can see 80%, almost 90% in the Wilmington area, you can still get caught in pretty heavy rainfall and flooding could be a big concern for you because it might not allow you to actually take your exact route and it might actually cause a lot of damage to your home and considering or if you are in a house that is susceptible to, to uh, flooding. So just just keep all these things in mind while, when you are trying to evacuate because sometimes people do get stressed out and I understand that people are very stressed during hurricane preparation time and you know there's a lot of procrastination that goes on try not to for this storm because it could come up it, you don't know exactly where it's going we have a pretty good idea but we aren't 100 percent certain just yet but when we are certain you will know and you will know whether or not evacuation is necessary or not because you will need to adhere to your local officials to actually find out that information i'm not an official i am just a weather i'm just a weather uh geek basically making videos and it's, this is not my profession, I just do this for fun. So adhere, your, adhere advice from your local officials and they will tell you what is best for you and for your location. All right, that's it for today. Uh, again, we have Florence here, probably going to impact the East Coast of the United States in some form. Isaac moving towards the Lesser Antilles, Helene move, uh, passing the Cabo Verde Islands and moving on out to sea and this craving disturbance over here that probably won't be doing too much. Alright, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to stay weather alert during this time.